Good morning, Fairfield Christian. Hope you guys had a fantastic weekend. Hope you guys had a chance to relax a little bit, maybe spend some time with family. Definitely should have gone to church. Uh, but hopefully you got a chance, if you're a football fan, to watch a little football this weekend. This is the opening weekend of the NFL. Uh, if you're a Raiders fan, congratulations. If you're a Niners fan, uh, you guys didn't look so good. But my Steelers won, so uh, that's great. Mr. Ford was pretty happy this weekend. But it's now Monday morning. It's time to get back into our schoolwork. Let's take a look at our scripture memorization for this week. We're in the book of Matthew, chapter 9. We're talking about the calling of Matthew at this point. And uh, we're going to be looking at verse, uh, verse 9 and also verse 13 for you older kids. And in verse 9, this is what it says. As Jesus was walking along, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at his tax collector's booth. Follow me and be my disciple, Jesus said to him. So Matthew got up and followed him. In verse 13, Jesus continues to say, For I have come to call not those who think they are righteous, but those who know they are sinners. Now, the Christian characteristic we're looking at this week is being available. Now, this is not one that uh, we often talk about, but being available as a Christian is, is very, very important. We talk about it in athletics all the time. If you want to be a great athlete, you have to be available to compete. Like if you're playing football and you're a football player, but you're always hurt, you're not available to play with your teammates. You're not available to help the team. You're not available to be great because you can't get on the field. Likewise, if you're suspended all the time because you have bad behavior, there's no way you can never be considered a great player because you can never get on the field to play because you're suspended all the time. It's the same way with being a Christian. I can't be considered a great Christian if, I'm, if I don't make myself available to Jesus to do the things that Jesus needs me to do. If I'm so wrapped up in the things that I need to do that I think are important, I'm not, a, I'm not available to help the kingdom of God. And this is exactly what's going on in this situation. Now, this seems like a mundane, kind of a boring story. You know, Jesus is walking along, he sees Matthew, says, come follow me. Matthew says, okay. But it was a much bigger deal than that. And that's because of all the dynamics taking place here. First of all, you have to understand, being a tax collector for the Romans in Judea was not a very popular position. Being a tax collector, you worked for the Romans. Remember, the Romans were in charge during this time. They ruled over the Jews. The Jews didn't like the Romans ruling over them. The Jews wanted to be in charge of themselves. So the fact that another Jew would work for the Romans as a tax collector, that was the first bad thing. They didn't like Matthew as a tax collector because he was a Jew working for the Romans. But on top of that, tax collectors were seen as crooks. And that's because tax collectors, when they collected taxes and the money from people, they would actually take a little extra money and keep some of the money for themselves and then give the rest as taxes to Rome. So the Jews did not like the fact that, that the tax collectors worked for Romans and the fact that they were stealing money from other Jews. So tax collectors were not popular people. In fact, uh, in just a, the verses in between, verses 9 and 13, the Pharisees asked the other disciples, why does your teacher hang out with tax collectors and sinners? So they're equating tax collecting with sinning. That's how low they viewed tax collectors. But you know what? Jesus didn't care about that because he saw the good in Matthew. He saw that even though Matthew, in the eyes of other people, was not a good person, Jesus could see something good in Matthew and said, hey, come follow me. So that probably was not a very popular decision for Jesus to make, to include someone like a tax collector in his group of disciples. And it was probably a difficult decision for Matthew to go join Jesus as well. A tax collector made a lot of money, a lot of money. And to simply walk away from that to go work for Jesus, and Jesus didn't pay him anything. That was probably a tough decision. Imagine making like, I don't know, $2 million a year, and then Jesus coming and say, hey, I want you to quit your job, where you make lots of money, just quit your job and come work for me. And I'm not gonna pay you any money. In fact, the only time you'll ever get anything is when people offer it to you. That's kind of, that's gonna be a tough decision to make, right? But Matthew made that decision. So that, that's one reason that Matthew's such a great dude. He left a very lucrative job to go and follow Jesus. And that's the same thing we need to do as well. When Jesus wants us to do something for him, we need to drop everything else, no matter how good we think it is, and go follow Jesus. Most of you know, before I came to work at Fairfield Christian School, uh, I was an animal trainer, primarily working with tigers and lions. I loved my job. Loved it. It was dangerous at times, yes. Got hurt a little bit from time to time. But overall, I loved my job. I had been doing it for 15 years, and I was pretty good at it. I performed in shows all the time. I probably performed in front of millions of people for 15 years in all the shows that I did throughout the years. I loved it. People looked up to me. I got to meet lots of popular people, lots of 
celebrities, athletes, and things would come. We got taken behind stage, meet the Tigers, and things like that. Uh, it, was, it was fantastic. And being there for so long, I was a senior trainer. I was in charge of other people. I got to do, you know, so I had to do some of the, the tough stuff. But we had other people, apprentice trainers, to do all the, the tough stuff, all the nasty stuff. And so I got to have the, the best parts of the job. It was really kind of an easy job after 15 years. I knew what I was doing. I, I was in charge of a lot of people. It was kind of a cool gig. I liked it. I enjoyed it. I thought I was going to be doing that for the rest of my life. But then I got called to do something else. Something that was more difficult, would take more time, possibly not make as much money, yet God called me to do it. And I needed to be available to say yes. And God has used me in some incredible ways because of that, because I made myself available. And that's what we all need to do. We all need to think about what does the kingdom of God need? What is Jesus calling me to do? In addition, uh, the Pharisees were worried that Jesus was calling Matthew and because they considered tax collectors sinners, you know, they weren't too happy with the decision. But Jesus said, I didn't, call those, I didn't come to call those who think they are righteous. He's talking about the Pharisees right there, because they thought they were righteous. They thought they were all good. They were following all the rules just like they were supposed to. But Jesus says, uh, he came to call those who know they are sinners. And if we have salvation, we have to know that we're sinners, because we have to be able to ask for forgiveness. If we think we're righteous and we think we don't do anything wrong, well, there's a problem there because the Bible says we're all sinners. And we need to know that we're sinners and we need to know that we need Jesus. Matthew, in leaving the, his job as a tax collector and following Jesus, was making a declaration. I know there's more of this world than the money that I'm getting from the tax collector. I know that I need to follow Jesus. I know I'm a sinner and I know I need Jesus to be made right. And that's the same decision we need to make as well. When Jesus calls us, we have to answer Jesus' call so that we can be made right through Jesus. All right, we'll be talking about these verses throughout the week, hopefully in your uh, devotion times in class. We'll definitely be talking about it in chapel on Friday as well. Hope you guys have a fantastic week. I will see you guys around campus. God bless.